Hi, this is Rena Jada for Vader News. Here at the Caritza Forum Holiday Party, and we're speaking with John Matese. And John, welcome to the show. Thanks. Tell us a little bit about your background. So, well, I'm a, I guess you'd say, a serial entrepreneur like yeah. everybody else here, and I've been involved in the tech business for a long, long time. And I got into Caritza and got interested in things besides software. Uh, one day I decided to form a committee. We have we have screening committees. We have software and medical devices. And I came to the understanding that there was a lot of money to be made in other things besides software. So really, one day I just decided to form a committee, and I thought it would make it fun. So I decided to call it the Cool Stuff Committee. Okay. So we have now the Cool Stuff Committee, where we screen a lot of consumer products and things that don't quite fit just plain old software or life sciences. And I got to tell you, it was the smartest thing I've ever done. Um, yeah. Tell us about the coolest thing you've seen lately. Um, I, let's see. Uh, I got to think of the coolest thing I've seen lately. Well, we've had we've had suborbital rocket ships that Ooh, you can that's cool. get invested in. Okay. We've had um, anti-drunk driving systems. We've had digital peepholes for front doors. <laughs> We've had marketing advertising systems. We've uh -huh. had uh, pet products. Uh, I got invested in one that's an automatic um, litter machine for cats. Um, we've had shipping containers. We've had, I mean, you name it. We've had How often do they get funded relative um, to the percentage of companies that uh, are in the software space? Uh, I would say they get funded as often as anything That's else. Good to know. Um, it's still a very tough project to get funded. Um, getting money is not an easy deal right okay. now. So okay. it, has, it, it wasn't easy before. It's really not easy now. All right, um, so let's talk so, about that. Yeah. Uh, you're an investor. Have you been uh, investing lately? And what's the sentiment uh, like? Well, I haven't been investing myself lately, mostly because I've got so many projects. I'm kind of tied up with keeping those ones going that I have. So I've got I've got to raise more money for the existing ones that I have. So that's another challenging product a project. Um, and I have companies here in the U.S. and a couple in China and things going on. So I'm I'm very busy with that. Yeah. Uh, but I would say the average a angel investor right now is not happy to invest. Their you know their net worth is down, and so right. Um, you know it's it's a frosty time to be out looking for money. Uh, on the other hand, I think it's also a good time uh, to be investing in companies. The mismatch is that I'm not seeing people with very super compelling business cases. And that's the thing that I would convey to entrepreneurs is you've got to be able to tell your story to the folks that might be investors, and because if you don't, they're not going to invest. Um, and it's not just a story. You were telling me earlier it has to be a spectacular story. Well, it should be a very compelling business case because, frankly, why would anyone invest in a risky business right now? Because already their money is more tied up and they just have less of it right now. So if you, if you can't present something that's really shockingly good looking, you're just yeah. not going to raise money. So, but there are, but I have seen. Lots of good entrepreneurs out there, and I see every month I see great, great ideas. Uh -huh. um, every month I also see great ideas fail to raise money because they're not able to articulate the value proposition of their company, or more, more in particular, what's in it for the investor and how's the investor going to make money, how's that going to work. Uh, it's a question tough. on that. Do yeah. you believe uh, the reason that the entrepreneurs are not telling the story is because they themselves have not really articulated it internally and that's being reflected in the presentation or is it that a lot of these entrepreneurs are not investing enough time in understanding that it's a much more competitive situation and that they really need to nail that presentation coming out? I would say it's the latter. I mean, I, everybody's very passionate that I meet about their business. That's not usually a problem. Um, passionate people start businesses great. Um, I, I would have to say though that people do not prepare accordingly. Uh -huh. And I would have to say that a lot of investors get really upset if someone comes to them without fully preparing because, like, you're asking for money. Right. And, and I can't tell you. I would say eight out of ten people that come to us and ask for money are so poorly prepared that it's just such a turnoff that they just fail immediately. And that's a shame because a lot of good ideas. But, you know, really, uh, you know, basic things showing up on time. I was going to say, now I have to ask you. you know, just, All right, give just, us your five pet peeves. 
um, uh, yeah, telling telling me about everything in your life from high school on up is not necessary. <laughs> All um, right, you know, don't we, talk about your background in great detail. Uh, well, Next. yeah, I mean, yeah. No, no uh, you're absolutely right. I've been you know, there. I've, um, I've heard it. I only need to know that you went to Stanford if you got the Nobel Prize or something. Otherwise, I'm not really sure I need to know that. Um, I don't need to know about too much about your work history, other than sometimes it's pertinent if you've had, you know, if you founded Microsoft and did well. Okay, I, you know, I would like to know that probably. Uh, or something like that. Um, but realistically, I want to know what's the business, what's the market, mm -hmm. how do you make money with this, what, mm -hmm. do, what is the plan for that, what's the mm -hmm. value proposition for your customers, what's the competition like, and how do you know that your business is going to succeed, and what's in right. it for the investor? Which is you the know, one that people forget most? Because I, I have all one. five of those. Oh, is that right? Okay. Every single time I do, okay. I do this, I screen companies. All month long, every month, I screen right. anywhere from you know 20 to 30 companies a month, and right. I would say 80 to 90 percent of those people don't do a very good job. Do you coach them? Somewhat, but you know, I I just run out of time to of do course, it. Of course, of course. Um, you know, so we do have a boot camp that you can go to that okay. will give you some coaching, but um, frankly, you have to be able. To figure that out on your own, because if you don't, there is someone else who will have. Absolutely. Um, and you know, 90% are bad, but I do see the good ones. Okay. And so, you know, uh, if you expose yourself to not being ready, you're going to miss it, and someone will um, grab those investor dollars. Absolutely. So it happens. It happens. And the one that I see most often is that uh, they don't focus on that fifth one. What's in it for the investor? Um, at the end of the day, investors are Classic. in it for money, and you have to go out and be very clear. Uh, about what is the percentage return or what is at the end of the day, how much are you going to return on well, my dollar? More than that, you really have to understand. I mean, first of all, people spend too much time trying to sell me their product. I, like, I don't really <laughs> care. I mean, because I don't know right. every product right. and I don't, I don't know nano probes from uh, garments, from, you know, electronic systems. I mean, I get a sense, but right. I don't need to know all of that. What I do need to know though is who else is in the market mm -hmm. and why is yours going to be better? How are you going to penetrate that market? So mm -hmm. I want to know an understanding. I want to see your understanding mm -hmm. of how you know what you're doing in your business because mm -hmm. I need some confidence that right. I'm not just writing a check to some great idea that's just going to fall over. Right. And so what's in it for the investor? Well, of course, everyone everyone comes in and says, well, you know, John, this is a $35 billion market. We're going to take 1% and only 1% of that and we're going to be rich. And Entrepreneurs, like, don't speak like that. Well, he doesn't like it. Uh, nobody, <laughs> likes, nobody likes it because what is a $35 billion? I don't know. I mean, every everything that you can pick to do in a business is in some multi-billion dollar market. Definition fact, it is. So I'm not interested in that. I don't care what you're going to get half of 1% of whatever. No, I want to know, do you really understand your business and your operations and where, who's going to pay whom and when? Mm -hmm. And then when you talk about what's in it for the investor, I mean, I'm sure, yes, you're going to pay back my loan and you're going to have multiples of something that somebody's going to buy the company. I want to know that in brief, but I, what I really want to know is, do you understand really the market? And don't just tell me, well, yeah, Microsoft or SAP or Oracle or Pepsi or someone's going to buy the company because they bought two others last year. Not necessarily. Not mm -hmm. necessarily. Um, mm -hmm. You really have to know what you're doing with the company, and you have to tell me that you know that. Because mm -hmm. if you can't do that, mm -hmm. which most people don't, then you're not going to get investor dollars. So convincing the investor that you understand your business is of paramount importance. Being able to articulate that. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, right. and really be crystal clear about it. And I'm okay with rough edges. Um, that's not so much the problem. But I think the complete lack of preparation when people come to me without really being understanding, it's just like, well, hey, I had a great idea, right. and you know, I sold two of these, so I'm sure it's going to be a great market. Well, I'm not so sure. Okay. You know, how do you know? No, so. that's, that's good advice. Um, make some predictions for 2009. Um, well, it's, uh, I think it's still a good time to start a business as an okay. entrepreneur. Um, okay. It's going to be frosty getting investor dollars for at least the first half of the year. I'm sure of that. But that okay. doesn't mean it's not there. The people are sitting on their money, but they're looking for that stuff. Um, clean tech is still very popular. Socially responsible things are popular. 
Um, I'm looking towards projects with water right now because I water. think that's the next oil. Okay. Um, uh, oil and gas development things, which is not usually in an entrepreneurial situation. Would you say good. U.S. wide or globally water? I would say glo yeah. globally yeah. water. In it's particular. a big issue globally. Yeah, it is. It's it's and also food production. Um, it's since a big the world issue. is running out of food, so mm -hmm. I'm I'm going to turn my attention towards those things. Okay. Now that's not well understood or very popular amongst angel investors right now. So right. Gonna be it's a, little, a higher risk. I'm going to be a little leading edge. I'm not sure it's higher risk, to be perfectly really? honest. Yeah. Uh, I think it's not well understood, mm -hmm. and it's rarely presented, but I'm not sure it's higher risk. Frankly, I'll tell you, high risk, develop new software that you have to prove a new paradigm and sell into, into uh, business worldwide, that's extremely high risk. Um, okay. I've been doing that for you know the last 20 years, and I know how hard that is. Um, so you believe some of this untested, uncharted territory is less risk because I, it's not uncharted; it's less popular. There's a difference. Well, there's so a lot fewer companies in the water space or the food production that's right, there are than fewer there are companies. In, that right. doesn't mean it's uncharted; it just means it's less popular and less right. talked about. Right. Uh, but I find those things uh, that's stuff that the world needs. The world already has a lot of software. I think if but it's crappy software. Yeah, but you know what? I think if the world stopped making software for an entire year, no one would know. That's probably uh, true. Uh, so, and take that for I'm a, I'm a software expert. That's I'm probably a, true. You know, I, yeah. I know I know my software, but so your point is I go fix some big problems. Don't have to. No, actually, I think fixing smaller problems is a better idea. Um, for an angel investor, I can't do big problems. I can't. The food production's a big problem. Um, it is, but you can take small pieces right. of it. Right. Yeah, I can't. I can't solve global hunger. Uh, of course. As an angel investor, it's beyond me. That's what Bill Gates is for. So, <clears throat> but for me, um, I can invest in small businesses that are taking small chunks of solvable problems. And they're very tangible, and the world needs it. So I like those kind of things. Okay. So that's where I want to go. All right. Well, we appreciate that. When do you think we're going to turn a corner? I don't know. I don't know. I think it's not soon. Um, but, I, you know, I have a lot of faith that entrepreneurs and startup companies are the way out of the current situation because the big companies have already demonstrated that they're not too good at that. So... So it's an opportunity. It's a great opportunity. All right. Well, here's the 2009. Thanks, John. Thank you.